What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys a spoiler review. That's right, since The Mummy has dropped this weekend, as I promised you guys on my channel, I would be doing an in-depth spoiler review for the most recent Mummy movie with my special guest, Cody Leach. Cody, say what's up to my subscribers. What's going on guys, Cody Leach here. Uh, you've seen me and Ryan interact a few times, we just dropped our top five uh, Tom Cruise movies on my channel a couple days ago. We've done Masters of Movie Trivia, some other things, so you probably recognize me, but just in case you don't, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Cody. But anyway, guys, after Cody and I just saw The Mummy this weekend, we're ready to talk about the spoilers. So there's your warning, guys. If you still have not seen the most recent Mummy movie, this is spoiler filled. So without further ado, Cody, let's just start with this. So. The Mummy, I want to start with you, Cody. What were your overall thoughts walking out of The Mummy? Uh, disappointment, if I'm being honest, right out the gate. Uh, I was hoping very strongly that they were going to kind of embrace the horror roots of these characters. They were going to make it a lot darker, a lot more grounded. It was going to be a lot more of a throwback to the tone that they originally were intended to have back in, what was it, like the 30s when they first came out with these characters. But... It seems like they chose to go more the route of the Brendan Fraser 1999 movie, which I love that movie, but that movie already exists. And now you get this one, and it's meant to be like this universe kickoff film, plus a remake to the Brendan Fraser movie, plus a Tom Cruise action vehicle, plus a horror comedy, and all of those things just don't mesh very well at all. They have some really good individual scenes, some things that could have been tense and could have been scary, but it's ruined by really bad jokes, one character in particular. Um, you get Tom Cruise being the, the a good Tom Cruise. This is not going to be a Tom Cruise movie that's going to make anybody's top five, I don't believe. This isn't going to be a Tom Cruise character that you're going to really remember the movie for. But Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. He's always electrifying. He's always got the charisma. He always has personality. And for what they gave him to do, he performed that really well. I thought Sofia Vitella was awesome. I want to see more from her. The little bit that I have seen from her has been good, and this just cements her even more into my mind as somebody to keep an eye out for. And I liked uh, the uh, Dr. Jekyll, Russell Crowe, the little bit of introduction we got to him. I think he's going to be an interesting tie-in for all these movies. And even though I don't like the tone and the, the decisions they made with this one, I have small confidence that because it's not getting reviewed very well so far that they're going to fix a lot of those problems going forward with Bride of Frankenstein and Invisible Man and whatever other movies they come out with. Yeah, I completely agree with you, Cody. I was disappointed by this movie. I actually had some high expectations for this because I, again, I really liked the first Mummy movie with Brendan Fraser, but I was really let down by the overall humor of the movie. Some of the action sequences were cool, but the horror elements really weren't that scary. Tom Cruise is fine. Annabelle Wallace and Jake Johnson's a completely different story, which we will dive into. Yeah. But yeah, I wish they did this a lot better for the start of the Dark Universe. So yes. anyway, Cody. What I wanted to start with is talk about the mummy. Sophia Butella, like you said, she was really good as the mummy. I love mm -hmm. how they made her a female this time. And it was interesting to see like the past from her, the backstory and how in Egypt and how she killed those people at the start of the movie. And I kind of felt like it's way too much exposition and it's too boring like Russell Crowe was talking about it at the beginning and then Annabelle Wallace and I really wanted to see more of a good backstory with the mummy because Sophia Butella was one of the strongest characters in the film. Cody what were your overall thoughts? Do you agree or were you let down yeah. by the mummy's exposition? Uh, yeah I agree with pretty much everything you said. I really liked her version of the mummy. I think that this is one of the few times when it isn't just a generic gender swap and they call it something different. They actually took it into a little bit more of an evil territory with her. She's not sympathetic at all. Even Arnold Vosloo in the 1999 movie is sympathetic somewhat because he's doing it all for love. She's doing it just because she's evil. She wants power. She can't have it, so she murders her family. She murders an infant, which is about as dark as you can get. But yeah, like you said, when it, it could have been a really cool opening to the movie to spend 10 or 15 minutes at least in that world and see it all play out in real time and then jump into Tom Cruise, they choose to make it more of like Russell Crowe telling you a story before bedtime. And it's really strange because <laughs> even though even though they did kind of the same thing with the 1999 Mummy with Oded Fair narrating over the beginning, somehow that worked and this didn't work as well. 
you know, it's really dark and evil, and it could have made a bigger impact had we kind of saw her as this warrior, as this person who's going to take over Egypt, and she's really powerful, and she's this big symbol of, you know, female power in Egypt, and then all of a sudden, this surprise son comes into play, and all of a sudden she snaps, and she's the most evil thing you could ever think of. That is a really big missed opportunity, especially if that character is going to go on, which is kind of a question mark that we'll get into when we talk about the end of the movie. But... Yeah, I liked her version of The Mummy, but I felt like her section of the story was fast-forwarded, it was voiced over, and then the movie literally held your hand and reminded you five or six times throughout the runtime, remember, she's evil, she was going to stab that guy in the heart, and we're like, we are aware. I said it in my review, I'm like, yeah, we know. Russell Crowe told, told us everything. We get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally agree. Um Next, I want to talk about Russell Crowe as Mr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I think he was one of the coolest parts in the movie. Um, yeah, he gave some heavy exposition scenes, but I was kind of intrigued a little bit of Russell Crowe as this character. One scene in particular, when he finally meets Tom Cruise's character, and he takes the serum, and then we see him with an evil side, and he fights Tom Cruise. I really like that, but again, they don't dive into it too much, and... As you said earlier, I'm interested to see what they do with Russell Crowe's character in particular, but I was just kind of let down. They just passed so many things. The screenwriters didn't know what they were doing. There's like seven credited screenwriters in this movie. It's a complete mess. Um, yeah. yeah, what were your thoughts overall on the Mr. Jekyll aspect? Uh, yeah, I liked it whenever he was first introduced the most, whenever he was kind of like this mysterious guy that comes in and tells all of these government workers, this is our jurisdiction now, get out, and he just gives them a piece of paper. Like I like that whole badass aspect of Russell Crowe just coming in and just owning the situation. Um, whenever he started to get a little bit more explained about who he is and this whole operation, it's cool for a universe building purpose, but at the same time, it felt a little bit strange to me how he has all these long exposition scenes about how he's kind of taking over the tombs and he never has any difficulty with his personality but yet whenever he meets Tom Cruise like twice within five minutes he has to inject himself like he has to inject himself all day long otherwise he's gonna turn into Mr. Hyde so that was a little strange how they were just trying to rush into that Mr. Hyde scene I almost felt like it could have been an even cooler thing to save Mr. Hyde for later on maybe just see him start to turn evil once Possibly. Maybe that would have disappointed some people. But I thought that the scene with him fighting Tom Cruise was cool. I thought that I liked the fact that Russell Crowe kind of had a completely different dialect, a completely different sound to his voice and the way that he acted whenever he turned. It was kind of like a mini version of James McAvoy and Split. I thought he did that well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, like I said before, I'm interested to see how they're going to weave his character into all these other movies. If he is, in fact, going to be in all of them or if he's just going to be kind of popping in maybe every third or fourth movie but I did like his character I just felt like like you said seven different screenwriters it felt like everybody had a different idea of what they wanted to do and it felt like a movie that was struggling to be its own thing while also struggling to be a commercial for what's to come and unfortunately Russell Crowe is part of that commercial side of the story yeah Cody I definitely see where you're coming from now I just want to talk about the overall characters in the movie Tom Cruise as Nick um, he's very charismatic and likable in the film, but the other characters such as Annabelle Wallace and, of course, Jake Johnson were the worst part about this movie by far. In my review, I stated that Annabelle Wallace is the definition of a damsel in distress. She has to be saved in every scene constantly. It was so freaking annoying. And Jake Johnson is the overall definition of a such an annoying character. His jokes were not funny at all. The whole side plot of him turning into a mummy really did not help the story at all. He follows Tom Cruise around like the mummy's in his mind. I'm just like, I don't give a shit about this. Just <laughs> dive into more character development. Yeah. Were your, those were your thoughts too, right, Cody? Yes, I agree. Uh, Tom Cruise is an interesting character because he's not... he's. Tom Cruise at his core, but he's a different character in the fact that he's not necessarily the shining good guy. He's kind of like a thief, kind of a scumbag, but he's a charismatic scumbag, so we like those kinds of characters. So Tom Cruise was cool. He was serviceable. And then you get into Annabelle Wallace, who is useless. She's a useless character. She didn't annoy me, but she serves no purpose. She serves no 
nothing to the movie whatsoever. You could yank her out and the movie would be the same. There was no chemistry between her and Cruz if they're going for a love interest, which is part of the angle they really dove into in the third act. So that didn't really have any gravity for me. She was just kind of there to explain things and re-explain things and re-explain things. I was rolling my eyes in the scene whenever she was kind of looking over the tomb whenever they found the Amonet's tomb and she's re-explaining to the audience that this is going to be something really bad and it's like this is the third time in 20 minutes of the first act of the movie that we've heard this so that was pointless and it's funny to me that you know not that they did this for an agenda purpose but they have this big move of turning the mummy into this strong female character and then they have one of the weakest cliches female damsel in distress characters in the same movie so it's like they cancel themselves out um, and then Jake Johnson, yeah, from the time that guy got onto the screen, I was excited at first because I actually like him. I think he's funny in New Girl. I think he was actually funny in Let's Be Cops. Not many people like that movie, but I'm one of them. But as soon as he opened his mouth, I hated him. I hated every word that came out of his mouth. He was annoying. He was terribly written. His acting was horrible. And the movie continuously teases you with how horrible his character is because he dies like 15, 20 minutes in. And I was relieved. I was like, okay, fine, good. I don't have to hear his mouth anymore. And then 15 minutes later, it's like they do this American Werewolf in London throwback where all of a sudden the dead best friend is like haunting Tom Cruise the whole movie. And I was like, oh, fuck me. He's going to be around for the rest of this movie. And he keeps coming back. And as soon as he comes in, he just injects the scene with terribleness. As soon as he opens his mouth and shows up as a ghost, I'm like, oh, no. And then, yeah. and then the yeah. end of the movie gives you the ultimate middle finger because Tom Cruise revives him so he can come back for a sequel. So, absolutely horrible. He, he's, I said it in my review, I don't think a movie in my recent memory has been brought down so much by one singular character. <clears throat> totally agree, 100%. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now let's um, talk about maybe some scenes that we liked and did not really like but let's talk about some of the scenes that were the best obviously the plane sequence is probably the best scene in the entire movie i love how it was shot directed it was intense enthralling yeah i really like the plane scene in the movie yeah what were your thoughts overall did you like the way it was shot set up and yeah what were your thoughts on the plane sequence um, I like the plane sequence. It would have been better had it not been shown in every single one of the trailers because by the time I saw it in the movie, I was no longer impressed by it. But it is a cool stunt. Tom Cruise always injects at least one of those you know, eye-popping stunts into every single one of his movies, especially the Mission Impossible movies. So it's kind of a staple to his career. So that was a cool scene. I like all of the, the way that everything looks as far as the opening of the movie about telling Amonette's backstory. I thought that looked really dark and cool, especially whenever the tattoos start to kind of crawl up her arm and go up to her face and she gets those evil red eyes. I thought that was cool. Um, I like some of the action sequences as far as how they're shot because they're, they're fun to watch. I mean, they're nothing like mind-blowing, but like some of the shooting and explosions in the very opening of the movie when you first get introduced to Tom Cruise and Jake Johnson was cool. I liked some of the scenes, like whenever, um, whenever that bus in London kind of is crashing in front of uh, Tom Cruise and Annabelle Wallace, and he pushes her out of the way, and he just gets taken out by all the seats. I thought that was a cool scene yeah. until the scene was over and Jake Johnson was there laughing at him. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah, that was cool. Um, I like. I liked whenever yeah, we. Honest, really I liked whenever things. we first uh, saw. Dominant. Whenever she first kind of came out and came to life, how she was kind of like bone cracking and was kind of moving around and her, her, her bones were kind of getting back into place, that was kind of a cool effect. But um, everything else, I'll talk a little bit more into whenever we move on to the scenes we didn't care for. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from in some of those scenes that weren't really that memorable, like the action in the movie. Yeah, it was cool, but I'm not going to remember it in one day. Yeah. Um, so now, Cody, let's talk about the ending of this movie. Mm -hmm. The ending. Yes. Obviously, spoilers, guys. The ending, Tom Cruise turns into a mummy. That's it. <laughs> yeah. What were you, I'm going to start it off with you, Cody. What were your overall thoughts on the ending? Did you like the way it was set up? Were you predicting it from the start of the movie? Just what were your overall thoughts? I didn't predict the fact that Tom Cruise was going to stab himself, but they had talked about that damn dagger so many times throughout the movie, just like I said, the movie holds your hand and constantly reminds you like you're an idiot, that I knew somebody was going to stab him. I knew that Tom Cruise was going to be turned at some point, not only because 
of the movie reminding you, but because I walked into this with the expectation that something was going to happen to Tom Cruise to carry him over into the other movies as a villain, because I didn't think he was going to be a Van Helsing character. I thought that was a little bit too predictable. A lot of people jumped onto that uh, that rumor. I figured he was either going to be turned into something different, like maybe a vampire was going to come out of nowhere, and maybe he'd be Dracula, or he would become the mummy at the very end of it. And the movie is actually kind of unclear about what happens, because he stabs himself, he takes out Aminette with absolutely no effort whatsoever, even though he's supposed to be consumed by this evil being. One look at Annabelle Wallace apparently washes all that away, which is strange, because it kind of negates everything the movie has told us the entire runtime. But then, as soon as he changes, whenever he like screams at her to wake up, he has like vampire fangs. So I thought he turned into Dracula for a second. But then, yeah. but then he dis yeah. he dissipates into sand, and at the very end of the movie, when he's running off to save the day with Jake Johnson again, and he's got the cloud of sand behind him, it's clearly telling you that he is like a second mummy character. So I'm confused about whether or not he's going to be our mummy for the rest of this you know, dark universe, or if he's just going to be an even more evil thing that maybe pops up in one or two movies, but Sophia Batella will actually come back because they show them putting her back into the tomb and putting her into like maybe some kind of a cryo state in the Prodigium warehouse or the headquarters. So clearly they have plans for her and it's going to be really disappointing for me if they just kind of wash her away in favor of bringing Tom Cruise back because he's Tom Cruise. But it was just a really strange and unclear ending because I feel like they could have been a lot more clear about what the hell he actually became. Yeah, I totally agree with you. The um, overall ending with Jake Johnson and Tom Cruise riding off in the desert, and then the whole ending, I was just really confused. It was like, okay, what's the point of this? Like, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying, and I wish it's more explained in the upcoming Dark Universe movies, like maybe is he Dracula and all that stuff, but... Yeah, I got really confused. Mm -hmm. So, Cody, to finish off this spoiler review, can you just tell us what you're hoping to see in the upcoming Dark Universe movies? Did this Mummy movie really make you question what's to come with the Dark Universe? Just what are you hoping to see? Uh, First and foremost, I hope they don't fuck up Dracula for the millionth time. I'm a big vampire fan, and I'll take that personally. So that's the main thing. Um, I wish that, or I really hope that they're going to take the criticism that they're getting from this movie from majority of people. I think 17% is what the movie's got on Rotten Tomatoes. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, that's a yeah. bad number. Yeah, the movie's right. making a lot of money overseas, so it's going to make its a, a profit, but it's really not doing very well in the U.S., which tells me that if they do a further movie that they make it very clear in advertising it's a follow-up to The Mummy, they might run into some problems unless that second movie really kicks ass. So the thing that they need to do is they need to drop the comedic tone, or at least do it a lot better and tone it way down. They need to really embrace the horror aspects because although people love summer blockbuster movies, it's horror fans who are passionate about those specific characters. Those are the ones you need to please above anybody else. Um, I hope that they do find a good way to tie all this in and not just make it seem like a gimmick because Marvel did it first, now everybody has to have a, a cinematic universe. And I hope that we get to see some characters come that we have not seen in a very long time because another criticism I had for The Mummy is that I don't feel like that's a good character to open up this universe with because the Brendan Fraser movies are still very much relevant in people's minds. People still talk about it, they still get released on Blu-ray and new brand new sets everything people still talk about those movies so they should have done something like maybe creature of the black lagoon or even frankenstein if they want to go a little bit more well known somebody that hasn't donned the screen in a very long time so i hope we get to see some of that that's our spoiler review for the mummy what do you guys think about the mummy overall do you agree with us or you completely disagree with us and think we're stupid let us know what you guys think down below in the comments so Anyway, thank you so much, Coney, for joining me on this spoiler review for The Mummy. Now, I want to give you a chance to tell my subscribers where we can find you on all your social media. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And you guys check out our last collaboration we just did last week, our top five Tom Cruise movies. It's a really good precursor to this video, but if you just sat through this, it's a good way to end this video as well. So check that out. Uh, you can find me on yeah. YouTube by searching Cody Leach, or you could just type in youtube.com slash Cody Leach channel. Um, also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, you can search my name, or on Twitter, it's CJL Lone Wolf, and Facebook, I believe, is facebook.com slash Lone Wolf 90, which is also my PlayStation, so you can find me on there too. I'm all over the place. Come and check me out.
Awesome. And this is not Cody's last time on my channel. You will see him debut on my new game show coming up next weekend. Rotten or Fresh, he's going to be one of my first competitors on that show. It's going to be very exciting to finally debut it. Thank you guys as always for watching this review. And if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!